I'm Tate Young, and I'm not going to tell you my age because my mom told me not to. <laughs> so um, I'm half Thai, half American, and I was born here in Thailand, born and raised here in Thailand, and I went to an international school here in Thailand called Bangkok Patna School. I've been in the music business for now 12 years, so it's been 12 years of um, experience in the music business and I started off with um, a singing contest. I entered a singing contest and um, I won the contest and then a label, you know, a label record um, approached me and asked me if I wanted to have my own album and that's how I got started and here I am today still in the music business and I still love it. Well, once, um, once I got started, you know, school was pretty tough for me, but then I decided with my parents that I, I still want to, you know, I still want to be a child and graduate high school and want to do, you know, everything that's education, ed educational. So finally, um, I studied home studies at home and I had, a, I had a tutor who traveled with me on the tour as well. So I graduated under the Nebraska University for the home studies. It's, you know, it's basically all the regular stuff you'd study in school and high, for high school. Math, geography, art, you know, all that. But it's, it's really, really fun. But at the same time, it's also really, really hard because you have to, like, push yourself to get up and actually do all this. And sometimes you're just like, oh, I'm so exhausted from work and I don't want to do it. But I finally graduated. Happy, happy. I would have definitely went to um, cooking school, culinary school. I want to become a chef. That's like my dream because I love to cook so much. It's like, and I think it must be really fun. You know, I mean, if you go to school, you want to do something that you love, you absolutely love. I mean, it's a waste of time to be going to school and, and learn something that you think will be good for you, but it's not. So it's better to do something that you love. And I love cooking. So I wanted, you know, I always wanted to cook. And I even thought about it. I mean, if if I if I don't sing anymore, I'm actually gonna, you know, go to culinary school and finish all my you know diplomas and certificates and all this and that. I want to be a three star chef. I kind of like to um, I like fusion food, but at the same time, I'm not very good at it. I, I'm very creative, but. Most of the time you can't eat my creative food. So I, I stick to Italian, I stick to Thai, and all the basic stuff. Fusion maybe, you know, needs, you need a little more experience to kind of like mess around a little. So I don't really have much time to mess around. I gotta cook and I gotta eat and I gotta go to bed. So Italian, Thai, I did learn a bit of Japanese food. Also learned how to make Japanese food, which was really, really a lot of fun. Like you'd never know you have to do so much with sushi rice. It's not just like, you, you don't just like make it and that's it. You have to put a lot of stuff in it that you know people don't really know, which is, which is really, really cool. This is my eighth album. I had six albums in Thai, one in English, which was I Believe, and this, this one, Temperature Rising. So I think all together it's eight. Yes, I've done two movies. One is um, The Red Bike Story. It's a romantic comedy. And the other movie is The O Negative. It's dramatic, completely different role. But I had a lot of fun doing those two movies. And one TV series called Bly Tien, The Wick of the Candle. Ooh, I've been dreaming about Hollywood movies. It would, it would be great to, you know, star with such a famous actor or an actress, I don't mind anybody at all. And um, Bollywood films, Bollywood films would be really cool too. Running around the mountains and singing.
I released I Believe album in the year 2003 in February. Valentine's Day. Right on Valentine's Day. I remember this because I was available at the time. And it was the loneliest year for me. <laughs> so I know, but it, it was, actually it was lonely, but at the same time the greatest year. Because something, something really big happened to me which was the album and I, I was so I was just so happy I was overwhelmed it was it was the greatest day of my life and um, yep and it's been going on for two years unbelievable I mean it, it, it we've been running around so much I mean people still have so much attention on the album that it's like for two years that's all I've been doing working on I believe and then finally this album temperature rising I just have to visit so many countries. Basically, you're just doing promo, a lot of promo tours, you know, and, and, and it's great to have your fans, you know, wanting to see you again and again. So, like, I went back to Japan, like, so many times. And in, like, Hong Kong or Singapore, you know, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I just love traveling and, and seeing. Japan, yes, Japan is my biggest market. Hi everyone! <laughs> Japan! Love ya! I stay here ya! <laughs> the album title is um, named kind of after the song El Nino. We, we all sat down and kind of like, okay, what's the... We, we, like, it took us the longest time with this album to come up with a name, the perfect name. Because we wanted something that that because this is going to be a bigger album so we wanted something that would you know represent something big that's happening that's that's cool cool and hot and everything so my manager Doug Banker kind of come up with the name temperature rising and that was because in the song El Nino there's you know there's this verse you saying you got my temperature rising like El Nino and everybody was like yeah cool temperature rising because I'm just rising and rising and rising, you know, from the album I Believe and now it's just temperature rising. So yeah, it's it's really, really cool. I, I love that name. I think it's, you know, the, at first I was like, I wanted something different. I don't want something in the song, you know, so we were thinking about trillions and millions of things. Like, we end up laughing and coming, like, we, we were coming up with like really, really funny names. And we were laughing and laughing and laughing, like to the point where we were like, okay, let's just put this aside and just think about something else because we couldn't think about anything but then but then you know temperature rising kind of you know grew on me a little bit so I, I liked it yeah <laughs> okay the funniest one though that, um, I think my father right it was my was it my father it was someone, it was, it was someone from the gang. There was, okay, there was Melanie Giles Clapp, <laughs> our marketing girls, right there with me, and there's my assistant, Mu, and there was my father. We were going to India, and we were sitting down, we were like, okay, what's the album's name? With, and somebody came up with, Love Me, I'm Famous. <laughs> I'd be like, what? <laughs> Love Me, I'm Famous, and there's a couple that, that, that is like hilarious. Like, you wouldn't believe it. I think we're going to release it in August and um, Japan's going to get the first launch because they've been, you know, the best fans that I've ever had. I sold so many albums there so I wanted to give them the opportunity of, you know, having the first choice and the first people to get a listen of the album. All together there's um, 12 tracks and my favorite song Okay, this is really tough. Well, a few of your favorites. I like all of them because actually they're different. I'm not answering your question, I know that, but let me tell you a little bit. Like El Nino has a really, really, like it's got a really good tempo to it. Like when you listen to the song, you want to get up and dance. Come Rain, Come Shine is like, this is another song that every time like I play it, I get up and I, can I, can I just do something to show that, like I do this. It's like, you know, it's like disco. It's like 80s. So it's like, it's really, really cool. Back out of this is like, 
update it. You know, when you when you hear it, you're it's like you're hearing in sync Britney Spears. You know that like the pop pop the pop thing. Zoom Zoom was specially written for me, so it's like it's talking about me. And and I love the track. I love I love the way it turned out to be. At first, I, I love the way it was, but it turned out to be better with my voice on it and everything. Um, what else? I like Mila Mila. Mila Mila is also very, very cool. It's a very cool song. Like, when I first heard it, I was like, hmm, I don't know about it because it's, we wanted something that, that was like doom, doom, doom. But then it turned out to be a really sexy, cool, chill song. So it's, I guess those are my favorite songs on the album that I really, uh-oh, you can't miss uh-oh. Uh-oh is another song that everybody can, you know, everybody remembers the, the, there's this lick that goes, you know, everybody remembers that, yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> now you all know I didn't do it. <laughs> We started recording the, this album this year, in January, which um, we had the songs a long time ago, but then we were like, we were, we were trying to find the best slot to, because there was, you know, all the songs that I picked out was like, this person is in Canada, the producer is in Canada, this guy's in London, so we were trying to fit the time where I can run from this country to the other country, and we finally did it. We finally did it with like seven, six or seven songs. So I started in LA, and then I went to Canada, and then we went back to New York. So, um, and then I came back to Thailand, and then I went to London, and then I came back to Thailand and recorded in Thailand and went to India. So it was like, it was pretty adventurous. Sony, Sony helped me with, you know, the songs. They, they basically spread out the news that there's a new artist and, you know, and people, and we gather a lot of stuff. We want, we, we told all the people what kind of song we wanted. We kind of spread the news to all the publishing company that, you know, there's a new artist. She's a, you know, she's a Thai artist, but she sings and speaks in English fluently. And we're looking for like a pop kind of hit, you know, and everybody was sending us songs. And my manager and I, and, um, and a lot of the MDs in many countries helped select the songs. So we, we finally came down to 12 songs and I'm so happy. It's just like, that's the process you kind of like, <clears throat> you know, you have to hear so many songs and you're not sure whether it's, if it's really good. You have to go back so many times and kind of, kind of listen to it again until you, you, you really, you know, so imagine listening to a thousand songs. <laughs> I guess you just have to find a producer that does the kind of music that you're doing. So basically, he's, he must be a pop, pop producer. He must work with a pop artist before. And we finally found a couple of people that have done, you know, a lot of work with Britney, that, you know, with Backstreet Boys, with NSYNC, with Jessica Simpson, Nick Lachey. Pretty good that I have a chance to get to work with all of them. Adam Anders and Nikki Hosman. They wrote Back Out of This and Zoom. And um, they're also my very good friends, so it makes it a lot easier for us to work together. Adam and Nikki actually came to Thailand to record Zoom because my schedule was so, it was so bad. Like I was so busy and I was getting sick. I was getting ill, you know, so, so um, when Gerald Tibayawan, he finally called Adam and Nikki said, you know, we really want to do Zoom, but Tata's, re she's not, she's been traveling so much that it's not healthy for her. I think you guys should come to Thailand, and they said, yeah, so they came to Thailand, and we recorded the song, and we took a little break, which was very, very nice. They took them around Thailand, you know, showed them around. Diane Warren, I, she is like, she's awesome. And she was showing me a lot of stuff. And we finally um, come across the, the song, I Want Some of That. She's, she, 
she was playing me these a couple of songs, which was very good, very good songs. But to me, it wasn't what we. It's not what we were looking for. Finally, she's like, I, I think I have one perfect song for you. She played me, I want some of that, and like, give me some of that. You know, this is what I want. Love it, and you know, and and she was so easy. She was so easy with me. She was like, anything you want, I like you. Um, whoever you wanted to, you know, produce, I, I do it. You wanted someone else to do it. You, you need to travel a lot. She was, she was very nice and very kind. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. So, yeah, it's great meeting her. And, she, you know, I mean, God, she's like the guru in the business. She knows exactly what she's doing. Come Rain, Come Shine is, um, is an old song, actually. And it's by Paul McCartney. And it's such an honor for me to be able to cover one of his songs. I mean, he's a legend in the business. And I, the first minute I heard Come Rain, Come Shine, I was like, this has got to be on the album. It's going to work in Asia, and I know it. It's, um, it's a disco kind of feel, you know, and it's, it's, a real, it's a song every time you turn on, you want to, like, you want to jump around the room and start dancing. So I, I know it's going to be a great song. My first single is um, El Nino. And El Nino, that's how you say it. Um, basically, it's a song that's talking about a girl who sees this guy and he's really hot, you know, and he's getting her temperature rising and, you know, all these natural disasters are happening. And so it's a really cool song. It's a really upbeat song. And, and, and I wrote the treatment to the music video. And the reason being was because everybody was sending us treatment. And I was like, mm, it's not really what I'm looking for. And then I had this thing in my head, because every time when you sing a song, you kind of imagine this picture so that you get a better picture and start singing it better, you know? So um, I, I was sitting down with my marketing girl, Mel, and I said, hey, you know what? Let's write this treatment, because I have this thing in my head. So we're going, we're in a hotel room and actually thrashing it. We're like, oh, we want to destroy this room. We're going like to the curtains and grabbing the curtains and... It was really cool, and it turned out that everybody loved the treatment. Probably it was it was from me, you know. It, it's me. It's the person that I am, and it suits me. Luck by luck, I picked out everybody by luck. I mean, to me, sty stylus is very important for sure because it's my look. I was always known for my look. I had this person, like this personal look that I, you know, that I had with I believe is a sexy look, and I wanted to find someone who's really, you know, updated and who's really like young, and was really hungry and motivated. So we finally, we finally found a stylist, and her name's Boom. She's great. She's great. I mean, some some of the things I don't know how. I don't know how she she was thinking about it, but she came up with the cool stuff that I can I can never imagine. But you know, I'm really lucky to be working with her. Um, hair and makeup. My my makeup artist, her name is Pinoc, and she's been working with, for me like with me for 13 years already, since I started in the business. And she's still my favorite, obviously because you know she knows she knows my face. She knows what I look good what color I look good on and what color I don't look good at all. So she knows me pretty well. Jade, we just started working with Jade. He's the hairstylist. And obviously we wanted something really, really sexy and really, really hot in this album. Something really, really girly, but at the same time is like stylish. So it's long hair and it's really like sometimes big hair, but wavy and natural. I used to get my makeup and hair done within like an hour and a half, but now it's taken me longer and probably I've, Aged. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, probably because we just wanted to. Um, we wanted to change the style, so a lot of things needed to be more, you know, focused on like the eyes and the hair. But you know, we we wanted to look really good and perfect. I wish that um, I I get to tour all of Asia, all of Europe. And finally, probably in America. But for now, my main my main focus is in Asia, because I have a huge fan base here, and I want to make it big here. I want everybody to know me here first. I want to have all the fans in Asia to be able to support me to go in other parts of the world. But Europe, 
Europe is also my other big goal. I mean, I mean, I have a lot of fan fan clubs in Europe, and so finally, I want to be able to 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 be close and interact with them closer. I am a dog person. I have a lot of dogs, and a lot of people, and a lot of them are stray dogs too. And people put them in front of my house because they know that I would never abandon. Like I would take them in. Obviously, they're like my babies, and they give me so much joy. I mean, I can be so sad and just give me an hour with, with, with my dog. I can be I can be the same person again. I, ha I still do have a lot of animals. I have fishes, a hamster, snakes. Yes, snakes, albino too, and um, but my favorite, my favorite is dogs, and my favorite dog is a French bulldog. I have a caretaker. When I'm away, I do have a caretaker. I have, I have at least three people who feeds all my dogs, who wash them, who take them for a walk, who plays ball with them every evening and every morning. And I do too when I'm available. I take my dogs to the spa, the dog spa, a lot because I like, I like them to be groomed. So I take them to rest, like restaurants, like my friend's restaurant, so they can have, you know, a little good time and they can have their little dog biscuits while, while my friend and I sit and eat. Mm -hmm. I'm a hip hop girl. I love hip hop. So I like to. Now, my favorite artist is Pussycat Dolls. I think they're very good. But my hip hop artist, definitely Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, um, Dr. Dre, Jay Z. Yeah, Jay Z. I do. I, I carry an iPod with me all the time, except for now my iPod is broken. I don't know why. And it tells me to go to the support thing on Mac, and I'm, not, I'm very not very good at that, but I, I'm still not figuring this out, so I'm going to send it back to the store, and hopefully I'll get my music back soon. I cannot live without my phone. I mean, I sleep with my Blackberry. I call it Crackberry. It's so addictive. It's so addictive, I swear. I mean, it's, it's how I get connected, you know, to all my friends around the world. Because email, email. Yeah, definitely my phone, my phone. And my music, iPod. Alright, to everybody and anybody that's watching this right now, please, please support my album, Temperature Rising. It's got so many good songs on this album and it's quality. It's good quality. So check it out and please do make any comments you guys want to make. So you can actually send in the comments to tatayoung.com and you can also check out the website. It's really, really awesome.